The Lake Orion community celebrated the 4th of July holiday with Flare Night around the lake, followed by a spectacular fireworks show. 100 golfers descended on Paint Creek Country Club to take part in the Orion Area Chamber's largest fundraiser of the year. The music festival known as Tommy Stock provided three days of music, food, and fun while raising funds for the maintenance of Camp Agawam. And the Orion Township Library became the newest location to offer life-saving tools to those dealing with opioid addiction. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. As we head into the final stretch of summer, let's take a look back at a longtime tradition that attracted visitors from all over Oakland County. On the evening of Friday, June 30th, residents living on the shores of Lake Orion lit up the night by placing flares on their property. Flares were sold at Wonder Cleaners and Ed's Broadway Gifts and acted as a fundraiser for the Lake Orion Lions Club. This tradition dates back to 1945 when the community celebrated the end of World War II and continues to this day. The following evening, residents and visitors from neighboring communities camped out along M24 to get a good view of the annual fireworks display. This year, the show was put on by the newly formed Lake Orion's Fireworks Foundation. A fundraiser held at OPA Food and Spirits in June raised over $15,000 to keep the tradition alive. Ace Pyro once again launched the fireworks from a barge on the lake. The show started a few minutes early to try to beat the rain that was in the forecast. The crowd didn't seem to mind when it started to drizzle, just as the grand finale wowed the spectators. Orient Area Chamber offers its members perks and networking opportunities throughout the year. These events are made possible thanks to their largest fundraiser of the year. On the morning of Monday, July 24th, 100 golfers showed up at Paint Creek Country Club to take part in the Chamber's 8th annual golf outing. Golfers and sponsors started the day off with breakfast in the banquet room, then headed out for 18 holes of golf on a beautiful summer day. Well, first of all, I feel extremely grateful that we had chamber weather because the weather today was perfect. Paint Creek Country Club did a fabulous job. I am so eternally grateful. Also, we had 204 members and community members participate to make this day as great as we did. That includes our, our golfers, our sponsors, our raffle donors, our swag bag donors, and all of our volunteers and our exceptional golf committee. So I'm really excited. It's my first time here doing this golf outing, so you can imagine my enthusiasm of having all these people come together for a common cause which was our golf outing today. To move things along, golfers began the day with a shotgun start and enjoyed scramble rules. Sponsors at each hole provided refreshments and activities like cornhole and a golf ball cannon. Oh man, get in the hole. There was many competitions, including a longest drive contest, closest to the pin, and a hole-in-one contest. Golfers even took a shot at Golfzilla, there was a 50-50 raffle and participants had a chance to win a wide variety of raffle prizes valued at over $12,000, donated by local businesses and organizations. The sold out event is the chamber's largest fundraiser of the year. I have no idea, wait. Oh, listen, good contact though, babe. You hit the, f hey. I'm here to tell We you. found her ball, my ball's in the trees over there. Absolutely, this is the largest fundraiser again with 100 golfers. So we're up uh, 20 golfers from last year. So we're up to 100 golfers this year. We were sold out with sponsorships. So that money raised today kind of helps the chamber operate, helps us continue to support our business community by offering um, beneficial services as well as educational opportunities, uh, access to our local leaders, and basically to help keep the lights on and to keep the chamber up and running. At the end of the day, everyone gathered in the banquet room for dinner, 
and to collect raffle prizes and trophies. Three teams boasted the lowest score of 16 under par, so it came down to a tiebreaker. And it was announced the winning team was made up of Katie Tisdale of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Teresa King of VTC Insurance Group in Oxford, Matt Marknick of Best Life and Company Realty Team, and Don White of Genesis Credit Union. Camp Agawam was owned and operated by the Boy Scouts since 1918 until it closed in 2013. Orion Township stepped up and purchased the property in 2014 to preserve it as recreational space. Recently, a major fundraiser took place to help with the care and upkeep of this gem in the community. The three-day music festival known as Tommy Stock kicked off on Friday, July 28th and came to an end on Sunday, July 30th. Visitors enjoyed a wide variety of music at the Fire Bowl with more entertainment at the Tiki Bar set up near the newly refurbished beach at Thomas Lake. So yeah, uh, Tiki Bar is set up right down by the new and improved beach here at Camp Agawam. If you haven't been to the beach at Camp Agawam, you should come just for the beach. Uh, they've doubled, more than doubled it in size. It's a beautiful beach. We've got a Tiki Bar and a tent set up. We've got cold drinks and uh, there's food vendors here. We've got frozen pina coladas, margaritas. You can come have a great time right on the water. Started in 2015, Tommy Stock acts as a fundraiser for the Friends of Camp Agawam, allowing them to maintain and improve the 140 acres making up the campsite. The group has made major improvements to the Fire Bowl where the bands perform, but their work is not done. Well, absolutely. I mean, we're not done at the Fire Bowl. We want to we want to put, put a covered pavilion over that stage, a permanent concession stand, um, uh, upgrade the power. There's the, the permanent restroom that's down there that needs some work so that we don't have to bring in porta john So there's a lot of work that can be done, and, and any, every little bit helps. I mean, anyone that uses this park, well, I mean, I hear a lot of people, oh, it's a township park, and the township should do that. We are the township, yeah. right? So we, we can do that and we come together and we can do it in a fun way. We can have concerts and we can have festivals and we can do things that raise money, have a good time and, and make this place even better for, this, you know, the, for the people of Lake Orion and Orion Township. This weekend came to a close with boobs, tubes and dudes at the Tiki Bar and on the beach. The event benefits the Real Men of Orion and Real Men Wear Pink campaigns as they raise money for their fight against breast cancer. The partygoers enjoyed music and refreshments and gathered for a huge pink float out on the water. Well, I want to say thank you, especially to, uh, you know, the township, uh, Chris Barnett, Aaron Watley, the people that allow us to use this park and put on this great, uh, this great event. And then we've got a great team at, at the Friends of Camp Agawam, Friends of Tommy's Lake in Camp Agawam. We expanded our board this year. We've got a lot of, you know, a lot of people that just care, not only care about this community, they care about this park, they care about this lake, and, and it's all about giving back and, and, and having a good time while we do it. If you miss Tommy Stock, you can still support the cause year-round by visiting friendsofcapagawam.org and making a donation. Opiate use is on the rise in the U.S. and deaths from drug overdoses passed 106,000 in 2021. Here in Lake Orion, several community organizations have come together to give residents access to a life-saving tool. On the morning of Thursday, July 27th, it was announced that the Orion Township Public Library has been added to the list of several locations in Oakland County that now can offer a Save a Life station. These stations give residents access to Narcan, which can reverse the effects of an overdose, as well as fentanyl testing strips, safe disposal kits, and informational resources. The library really wanted to be a part of this because we want to be a welcoming community environment. So we thought um, whatever we can do to provide access to this, even though we're not the experts and we're, you know, we're relying heavily on the other partners, uh, we can be that place where people feel comfortable coming to pick stuff up. Um, you know, we people come here and pick everything else up already, books, other materials we check out. This is kind of a natural extension. We can be that welcome, friendly environment. Uh, we have a space available 24 hours a day. So, um, yeah, we thought we'd be a, a good location for this. 
Our library has really become more of a community center uh, than anything else. They are expanding all of their services and resources available to the community, so they're actually the perfect partner to host the Save a Life station. Our families come here, um, they feel safe here, and we're hoping that they'll also feel safe to come and take um, advantage of access to Narcan and the fentanyl test strips and the things that are going to keep our families safe from any kind of opioid overdose or dependence. We know that um, opioid dependence can happen in just five short days, so that means any family who has had a wisdom tooth extraction or a sports injury may have opioids in their home or they may be prevalent in our community. So not one of us is um, immune to uh, the effects of opioids and this allows us to all have homes that are safe and protected and ready for any problems that may occur. You know, we have an opioid crisis going on nationally. Uh, we experience that in Orient as well. It doesn't affect just one demographic, it affects multiple demographics. It's, it covers anybody's susceptible to having an addiction issue or an accidental overdose. So now uh, this provides the Narcan, the, the, the one preventative measure one to, to help them not die from an overdose, uh, and it makes it publicly available. So the importance today um, for me is the vast sign of people that are actually supporting these things in their community. Um, the other importance is low barrier access to life-saving tools in this specific township. The Oakland County Community Health Network has provided the funding necessary to place these boxes in public facilities and can be the difference between life and death for those struggling with substance abuse. The Save a Life station at the library will be stocked and maintained by the Alliance of Coalitions for Healthy Communities. For more information about substance abuse issues or to see a list of additional prevention products and services, visit nocmi.org. When members of Lake Point Community Church in Oxford realized that not enough was being done to honor our nation's veterans, they formed a ministry to remedy the situation. Fifteen years later, their efforts are still going strong. On the afternoon of Saturday, July 29th, more than 100 veterans, family members, and an equal number of volunteers gathered at Lake Point Community Church in Oxford for the 15th annual Veterans Picnic. Originally planned as an outdoor event, the weather forced organizers to move indoors. Those in attendance enjoyed live music and enough food to feed a small army, thanks to donations and the efforts of volunteers. Uh, we bought it. <laughs> the, we've asked for donations for money to purchase uh, some of the food. Uh, we've got uh, cooks in the back uh, barbecuing. Uh, we've had some uh, foods that were donated. We had a hundred uh, hot dogs that were donated uh, by uh, the lovely owner of um, I think it's Copper, Copper Hills. Uh, and then we had, uh, she also donated a, a beautiful cake. Uh, and uh, the rest, oh, we had one gentleman that bought 40 pounds of uh, pulled pork, and prepared that at home and brought it here. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's truly, uh, a blessing to have so many people help us out. The Veterans Ministry at Lake Point Community Church began 15 years ago as a way to honor veterans of all ages in the Oxford, Orient area and surrounding communities. This year is the first time we, uh, we've invited uh, the veterans from uh, Chesterfield Township's Michigan Housing Group. Uh, we've also invited the Downriver Vets. Uh, they are the ones that build tiny homes for vets. And uh, we've got uh, members from uh, Paquette Square Housing, uh, Michigan Veterans Foundation. So we've got a, a, just a wonderful mix of uh, people from all over the community. So today we welcome everyone, all veterans, no matter what age, what war they serve in, um, the color of their skin or what they believe in. As we all come together as veterans um, for the main purpose of sharing uh, our stories, sharing the history, where we've been, where we served. It's very important to come together as brothers and sisters, you know, and share that, that camaraderie that you can't experience anywhere else, you know. It's like uh, young kids growing up together, you know, being that camaraderie in, in the same neighborhoods. This is kind of the same thing. Now that the picnic has come and gone, the Veterans Ministry turns its attention on their annual Veterans Recognition Dinner planned for November. For more information, visit lakepointcc.org. As I said earlier, the Chamber of Commerce is busy year-round offering perks to its members, including welcoming new businesses to the area. Recently, the Chamber had a reason to throw a party in downtown Lake Orion. 
On Friday, July 14th, representatives of the Orient Area Chamber of Commerce, along with the DDA, gathered at a historic home in the village to help celebrate the official grand opening of Spresser Ogden Attorneys at Law. Honestly, we are so incredibly surprised and grateful. Um, just in the two or three months we've really been downtown, it's been the most in incredible experience possible. We love the downtown village. It's a beautiful city. The chamber has been amazing. The support has been wonderful. So if this is just a glimpse of what the future looks like, we, we are beyond excited. You're not just a business. You're not just coming in, punching the clock, going home. You become a vested member of the community, and that's really our long-term goal, ultimately. Whatever we can do, you know, we, we need the, the dust to settle a little with the opening, but then the next phase is how do we become more involved? How do we become more in enacted, either through the school system, through the chamber, through the community? This home, located on Chadbolt near North Lapeer Road, was built in 1872 and is described as a charming Victorian manor with an attached showroom. It has a long history in downtown Lake Orion and was previously the home of Oakland Sports Chiropractic beginning in 2017. The attorneys inquired about the property in January of this year, made an offer, moved in within 60 days, made some renovations, and opened their doors to the public on May 1st. So my practice is solely family law, uh, custody, parenting time, divorce, prenups, postnups, everything family law related. Bill is really a litigator. Um, it, you know, he does both family law, criminal law, civil litigation. Um, he's, he really, honestly, is a litigator among litigators. Um, and so that's what our clients come to see us for. But I think truly, Bill and I really take a, a individualized approach to our cases. Um, we really care a lot about our clients. We wanted to offer a boutique firm. Uh, we didn't want to just be a another law office. Uh, we wanted to bring something a little bit different to our clients. So that's what we're here to do. Because litigation is stressful. It is overbearing. If you've ever had to hire an attorney, I admit it's a pain in the butt. I joke around. I don't like most of us, but <laughs> that's, it is what it is, all jokes aside. It's a necessary component of our judicial system, the way our country was founded. And it, sometimes there's no other way to solve a dispute but to put it between a jury or a judge, a, third, a neutral third party, to help resolve it. We can do that. We can negotiate a resolution, and we can even avoid the fight in advance. For more information, you can call 248-929-5990 or visit SpresserOgden.com. And finally, the staff at the Orion Township Public Library always seems to come up with creative ways to get families to check out what the library has to offer. Recently, they hosted a fun event that provided an opportunity to get a little exercise. On Saturday, July 22nd, approximately 120 participants showed up for the first ever color run on the ground surrounding the library. Runners and walkers of all ages were encouraged to wear white and followed a half-mile loop, encountering five color stations where volunteers doused them with colorful cornstarch. Yeah, we want it. We really want to be able to do stuff where all families can do stuff together, so the grown-ups and the kids can have fun at the same time. And this is just one of those examples of that that everyone can have fun doing a program like this, especially in the summer together. I hope that they come and see that the library is fun. We've got stuff for all ages. It's a good thing they can do with their family together. Um, and that they just have a good feeling when they're here at the library and that it builds that good rapport with people. The library has plenty of fun activities planned throughout August, including the summer reading program's grand finale. For more information, visit orionlibrary.org. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.